Linda Perry is one of the most successful and sought after songwriters of the 2000s. From 2001 to 2009, she wrote Pink's Get the Party Started, Christina Aguilera's Beautiful, Hurt, and Keeps Getting Better. She wrote Celine Dion's My Love and Alicia Keys' Superwoman. She's written songs for Ariana Grande, Miley Cyrus, Gwen Stefani, Brandi Carlisle, Daniel Powder, Courtney Love, Cheap Trick, to name a few. Songwriters make a lot of money from hit songs, but they don't often receive the credit for the final production that, say, a playwright would get for writing a play. So unless you perform the music that you write, like, say, Carole King or Dolly Parton or Paul Simon, you rarely get public attention for the final record. And so I thought, and so I thought Linda Perry, like all behind the scenes writers, deserves a bit of notice for her incredible work. But Linda Perry, like many songwriters, is also a musician. She actually got her first big break in the early 90s with her band Four Non Blondes, who are widely considered a one hit wonder, though what a hit it was. The song was called What's Up, written by and lead vocals by Linda Perry. And it is such a Gen X earworm. The chorus goes like this. Feel free to sing along if you feel so inclined to drown out my own bad singing. And so I wake in the morning and I step outside and I take a deep breath and I get real high and I scream from the top of my lungs, what's going on? And I said, hey, 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 I said, hey, what's going on? I bring all of this up because this song made its way back into my head this week while watching the 1970 Czechoslovakian art house fantasy fairy tale softcore horror Valerie and her week of wonders. During this movie, I just started humming the song. And I think it came to me because the song asks a really relevant question about this movie. What is going on? Hi, Cecil. Hi, Jeffrey. Do you have a favorite or least favorite earworm? Ooh, um, you know, like it's so funny. Like earworms are great. I, I'm, I'm generally okay with earworms. Uh, I, you know, like all this week, I had something stuck in my head, but it's generally easy come, easy go. It's like a few hours, and then I can put something else in there. Where I hold the, you know, the the worst of the worst is uh is karaoke earworms. So listen, if you think you're gonna rock out, the devil went down to Georgia. Please don't. <laughs> Just please don't. Because that song is nine and a half minutes long. I have the worst recurring earworm through most of my life, which is the Battle Hymn of the Republic. <laughs> oh, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I, the shut the Luther. fuck up! I was literally that was my earworm like last night. Started I, just whistling that tune out of nowhere, apropos of nothing. Uh, yeah, I love it. It's a great song, and I hate it. Uh, I should probably learn the John Brown John Brown's body lyrics. Those seem better. But, um, Cecil. Again, failed to get us a guest, but I did find a novelist, podcaster, a writer, and our what a, a resident expert on all things what the fuck. I found us a Sarah Griff. Hi, Sarah Griffin. How are you? Hi, Jeffrey, and hi, Cecil. Thank you so much for bringing me back. It's always a, always a joy and always a strange ride back to this podcast in particular. I'm very, very we, excited. <laughs> we really do pick the gems for you, Sarah. We, we just pluck them out of the trees of cinema horror history, and we're like, Sarah Griff? <laughs> oh, I love it. I've had so many sinister mornings in my apartment getting ready for this podcast, watching 70s nightmares unfold in broad daylight and in very unsavory ways. I was going to watch it last night and then I was like, no, but I could just ruin my own morning instead, you know, <laughs> instead of watching it at night like a normal person. So it's part of it. It's become a lovely routine at this point. So I'm um, I was ready. I was ready to rock. Uh, I wrote down every single thing that I saw on screen. <laughs> I'm um. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. You uh you texted me this morning. Uh <laughs> you said this movie is one. This movie's okay, text one, this movie is a fucking blast. Uh text two, deranged. Text three, <laughs> giving Lana Del Rey coquette tumbler girl realness. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which might just yeah. be uh, I, I might just put that as the description of this film in the show notes. So no, wait. I have two more. I have two more. I couldn't figure out which is better, uh, Valerie and her wig of wonders, <laughs> oh, <laughs> or <laughs> are you there, God? It's me, Valerie. <laughs> 
the eyeliner, the outfits, the tiny little ribbons on oh, everything. The ribbon, the just ribbons. Not... Now you just say bell, that, Cecil. Bells and pearls and <laughs> oh, lace and just crucifixes. casually <sighs> spitting up earrings. What is oh, more accurate in the horror of being just, a thirteen-year-old girl? Just, bleh. just, <laughs> just very elegantly spitting up earrings. Like, <laughs> where does she keep uh, them? We don't know. <laughs> Some Claire's accessories from beyond the gates of hell has furnished this <laughs> film with exquisite costume design oh, all yeah. the way. Now you would now would you classify this movie as a coming of age film? I Just think kidding. I would. <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfect Bildung's Roman, I feel. Mm -hmm. Um definitely a coming of age film. Um it's a coming of something film. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, a presume. lot of things have, a lot of things come in this film. <laughs> they they sure do. There's something I it was weird. I was gonna write my intro on because I mentioned this before in the show that there there was this real push in the 60s and 70s, at least in America, in cinema, like the sexual revolution was happening on film too. And it mm. started happening with adult cinemas a lot. Like pornography became very mainstream in yeah. a way that it isn't. Well, it is now, but it's not the same, right? Like people. No, would... it's not like deep throat rolling in the theaters. It's yeah, right. You don't go to a theater to see porn these no. days. No. no. Um, and so, yeah, th this it, there was also a lot of this like softcore porn. So like this morning as I was writing. <laughs> this intro i was doing a search which was i don't recommend doing the search unless you're looking for something different than i was which was 60s 70s soft core in film and <laughs> it was like it just it would just gave me a list of porn sites i'm like no no i'm sorry yeah. I, I really am just trying to get to the heart <laughs> of this is too early for this sort of madness that i'm looking for here well this movie starts with all of the things i love flute music check yep purple cursive font Check. Oh, oh, the font, exquisite. Sumptuous, yeah. sumptuous. Gauzy shots, though well, the whole movie is gauzy shots of this young girl, Valerie, putting a white ribbon in her hair. She's holding a dove and it's snowing. And you know what? Her eyeliner is immaculate. Oh my God. <laughs> Any sins of the wig that happen in this film are immediately forgiven by the quality of the eye makeup throughout. From the minute one, perfect. She's stunning. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so funny. I I, I had to do it like a little bit of like <clears throat> Czechoslovakian new wave. Just be like, okay, where in the world are we? What is going mm. on? Uh -huh. Man, you could tell that like behind the iron curtain, those girls were practicing their eyeliner like mad, <laughs> waiting for the minute to go out to the countryside and have a Grecian orgy on film. Just been like, I am going to, this is going to be fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> because like, the communists really? won't let us do this anymore. Like, that's it. Be the Iron Curtain raises and it's all, they're just serving behind it. Like, that's everybody it. in it is so healthy looking. Oh, yeah. And uh, the stylized nature of the costumes. And even from those first few shots, that's almost immediately the first thing that popped into my head was, this is so Lana Del Rey, man. The girlies <laughs> love this. It's a lot of kind of mooing around and being very dreamy. And even in the face of some of the horrors later on in the film, she does a lot of just sort of peeking out over her folded hands under her chin. It's an aesthetic dream. Um, it's a real, that softness is a really hard answer to, I think, what a lot of people assume is like the brutalism of art from that part of the world. I feel like I've learned a huge amount, even in that weird hour, hour and 10 minutes that I've watched it. I was like, I really have to get into the Jackney waves. They're, 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 they're freaks, one. Mm -hmm. And two, it's very <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> I think there's something interesting about the choice of this actor, this young actor, this 13 year old. Mm. This is her first film. And she is, um, I almost like wanted to compare it to Alice in Wonderland, but I think that doesn't really totally jive. Other, I mean, it is surreal. It's just things happen and happen and happen to her. But unlike Alice, like she never really seems adult or confused by her situation. And I think that's one thing that makes this movie so fascinating to watch is the fact that she's kind of taking the world in, but she she possesses the things that happen to her if that makes any sense as opposed to like alice is constantly 
flustered by her surroundings. Picking she's... fights with giant flowers. She's, yeah. yeah. She's yeah. not and happy confused, about the situation. And they're confused why they're angry at her. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, she is, Valerie is sleeping in a greenhouse, I guess, just dozing sure. off because no cares yeah. in the world. And a, and a, what would you call this? A farm boy? Like, I mean, he's not farm boy. He's dressed nice. Oh, no. Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Whatever Amish. he's like, whatever this Amish guy something. is. Yeah. Absolutely no idea what this fella's deal is other than this boater hat that he's wearing. This sort of wizard prince. Um <laughs> uh I have he he's he it was my continued source of bafflement throughout this. He uh rocks up and then I don't then hang on. He is it's he sort of shows up and steals her earrings or yes. gets her the earrings yes yeah. he steals the earrings yes, first. he steals them but he gives them right back a day later because he's yeah. like oh i'm so sorry but i also had to write you a note in in colored crayon <laughs> telling you yeah. that i stole them letters. all of his notes that he writes are in this movie are written in all capital letters like he's uh -huh. just finished first grade yep. and they are written in crayon but different colors for each word or letter even per letter <laughs> Which temporarily confuses it because it's obviously set in some sort of a like fancy music video world. But I'm not ever sure what year this is supposed to be. Are we no. in the 15th century? Are we in 1970? Like, who, one, who cares? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Two, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's the, 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 the child letters were lovely and very 1970s. Like, yeah. Well, he, uh, she wakes up. And says, who's there? And we see a scary masked face. It's got the polecat mask, which is like a weasel stoat sort of thing. Yeah. And she, the mask pulls aside and is a scary face with uh, the big the big fake Halloween teeth that you can buy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've on full sock, you blah. It is. It is big, big vampire teeth. Um. Okay. So then we have, so this is, this man, this young man, is Orlick or Eaglet in Czech. Eaglet. Eaglet. I like Orlick. I, I like, like Orlick. So Orlick works for the constable, whose name is Richard, which I think find very funny. Dick Constable. Uh, <laughs> but the constable is this like creepy faced fellow. But you know, we hear this voiceover, I guess, in Valerie's head. Where it's like, where are her earrings? Speak or I'll water torture you. Which he does a few times to poor Orlick. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every time we see Orlick, he is chained to something. <laughs> Being just chained casually waterboarded on the brink of death. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a recurring motif. Or or he's, or a group of virile young men are whipping water oh my near God. him to chase him away. The shirtless men that show up every now and then to whip people or to Please. tie them to stakes. The, the hot cops. topless men with tiny mustaches. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> really, it's like the Chippendales. It's like the thunder down under came to your village. Yeah, mincing through the Times Square, to, yeah. through, through the town square with whips. <laughs> like, um, I, I remember that the hearing the voice, you know, that extra diegetic, is that what it's called? A voice coming in and being like, oh, you're going to get whipped for stealing the earrings, you know? And I was like, hold on, hold on. What happened there? Who? who? <laughs> what is very important at the outset of trying to tell the story of this film is that nothing stays the same for long. It is really just a sequence of things that happen that are interconnected and immediately forgotten. Yeah. Um, so when this happens about this this voice kind of fading in, it happens so quickly and the, the, the scene moves so sharply on that by the time we find poor or like later on, I was like, oh shit, yeah, someone said they were going to waterboard them, didn't they? And it's just, a, it's a blur. It's mm -hmm. a blur. Valerie, then as she goes back to her house, two things happen. One, uh, she gets blood on a daisy. Uh, that's a thing that happens. There's no no symbolism there. And then she also runs across a group of women that, if you read the Wikipedia synopsis of this film, describes this group as virgins in the water. Mm. Okay, and so well, it <laughs> yes. Well, they're, well, they're not. Are, they, are you now? Listen, there's you know, there's a virgin, there's a backdoor virgin, and then there's a sturgeon virgin. <laughs> 
I just have here is OMG gorgeous blonde lesbians in a lake. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, they're virginal, you know, they're they have virginal. they're wearing white dresses. Yeah, uh -huh. One of them's kind of regular around with a fish, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. The sturgeon so, virgin. Um... <laughs> it's just, listen, things get things get real dull in the countryside. Just you got to make your own fun. Having a splish splash with the girls, yeah. you know. They're so. they're also fully kissing each other at a couple times with open mouths. It's oh uh, yeah, yeah. Sensual uh, bath with the girls. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, we also see her room, which is all white, white oh, bed, gorgeous. which actually looks like a baby crib, like just full sized. Everything about her room is white, and her dress is white. She is white. She curls up on her white bed. Everyone in her town is white as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like which I love. Like, it's like it's so theatrical. Like mm. Valerie, gorgeous and normal-ish, you know, for 1970. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is like pancake white. Mm -hmm. Which like means a comedia a kind of thing. There's like a bad, bad clown energy off them or something. Yeah. You know? Yes. This, yeah, this actually might fit our clowns dolls scare role. <laughs> Because it, it, there is a lot of that that Comedia de Arte sort of white face makeup. But the queen of white face makeup is Grandma. Oh, fuck me up. <laughs> the note both that I have grandma, for Grandma. The note that I have both for... as Grandma and as her alter ego. I mean, especially as her alter ego. But mm -hmm. I, Alter like... egos. Like, this is a woman of many, of many iterations. The note that I have for her is, that woman is 24 years old. <laughs> yep. Grandma. Like, she's, a, she's a young grandma. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's a vampire. Yep. Well, we, but listen, we, I, I, I love the fact that the vampires in this are not bad mm -mm. per se. Just hungry. It's just, they're just hungry. And even like even Valerie, and I think the reason, you know, like it, it's so it's really easy to draw that like Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. parallel because weird shit happens here right but valerie just kind of handles it all with a plum she's yeah. like oh no the big evil vampire is sad well i'm gonna bring him a chicken <laughs> yeah he does yeah there's a lot of compassion from valerie towards the the vampire characters toward richard and all of that uh, you know the enemy in the film is the church Oh yeah, the the one hundred percent. The enemy in the film is the Catholic Church. The enemy is not the vampires. The vampires are good and bad, but they're not like capital B bad. Um, the church is vile in this, yeah. mm -hmm. and even that Valerie's like poo poo, burn me at the stake, all you wish. Uh -huh. I'm gonna swallow this LSD, and I'll be unbothered. <laughs> oh, I thought it was just a pearl. A pearl earring, Cecil. Uh -huh. Just another <laughs> earring. One of her 50 earrings. <laughs> like, I, I, listen, if you want a drinking game or a smoking game, listen, whenever, whenever someone ingests or regurgitates a fucking pearl in this movie, you better take a hit. Mm -hmm. Delicately something. regurgitate. It's very delicate, very aesthetic regurgitation. It's not yeah. like squeamish. It's weirdly <laughs> cute. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah, it's like a chinchilla pooping, you know. Yeah, like even the even the horror of the grandmother is like because she's again so obviously twenty four years old. Yeah. her horror is one of kind of emaciation and kind of stillness. But she's also mm. like costumed really beautifully. There's a bad wig oh. now, but the costume <laughs> bit, is really bit, elegant and really fabulous. You know, like she's turning it out. Like, mm -hmm. there's a um. In this first conversation between Grandma and Valerie, Valerie points out, like, uh, hey, the actors have arrived. And we see musicians, you know, performing on their lutes and lyres and blah, blah, blah through the streets and dancing and coming out through the town square. And Grandma said, you should be more interested in the missionaries who have arrived in town. And all the, also, those aren't actors. Those, that's a... Uh, those are people part of Hedvika's wedding. Hedvika oh. is getting married. Oh, Hedvika, your best Poor friend. Poor Hedvika. I know. But you know what? She's going to get some kisses and cuddles later, so it'll be she okay. Is. Yeah. Oof. Grandma says Hedvika. Hedvika just looks sad uh, for most of her lead up to her marriage. She looks real sad because she's marrying a very old man who's pretty rough with her. Not like violent. It's just, he just is 
handling her like property, right? And um, he's a rich landowner, as we hear. Okay, so now this, it's in, I found this really, oh, here's one good, like, I really love this, like, creepy sort of jump scare thing as Valerie is looking out at this procession, this big party in the streets, Hedvika's wedding. There's the person in the polecat mask who pulls it back, and it is evil constable, bad teeth. He puts the mask back on, pulls it back again, and it is like a handsome younger man with a red, red mustache and red hair. I love a ginger. I think they're really good with they're really good with those little tiny jump scares. Yeah. Like they're not big, they're not screaming, they're not roaring. They're like horrible little flashes. Mm -hmm. And the way the masks are used in this, they're they're those that particular kind of, of featureless, faceless mask. And like a lot of things about the tone of this film, because it is just sexy set dressing and weird shit going down you could be like is this hot like what is the horror here and they punctuate it so well with a really sickening little flashes like that mm -hmm. that you're like it, it even though it, there's an absurdity to it and and, and no, i wouldn't say like a full camp but there is you know there's a, a silliness to some elements of it the little instances of horror are delivered like sharp little electrocutions and that masked moment with the constable constable bishop that dude that fella um he genuinely distressing like really mm -hmm. unsettling to yeah. look at also very clown-like as well like he always mm -hmm. has that sort of smile pasted over his lips especially in the beginning you know when he's not waterboarding his you know <laughs> his assistant servant. or whatever yeah yeah but it's it's he's always just implacably smiling and it's and it's the mask and it's also the fan work mm -hmm. there have i seen a fan worked so, and i have seen many episodes of rupaul drag race and the fan work in this is stunning i tell you he is accessory we'll, we'll get into his real accessory his true accessory in a minute but he has a he has a triptych of incredible accessories that he uses throughout this film and um yeah, he's 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 bringing the full package. I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> so you, know, you understand why this guy has probably been around for two hundred years, three hundred yeah. years, or something. Yeah, and also just his full like indigo face paint, right? Like this, this whatever color this is, this like rich blue purple sort of color that he is. He's very Papa Smurf <laughs> happening. Mm. Uh, I okay. I think one of my favorite just visual scenes is. Valerie has to go practice her scales on the harpsichord. Yes. And then a dove flies in with a letter written in crayon by Orlick Eaglet. And he is writing, beautiful maiden, I stole your earrings because my boss, the constable, wants them back. He killed my mom and dad, and now I fear for you. And he's writing this urgent letter to her, and the whole time she's just casually eating berries. Like, oh, yeah, this cool Valerie, story. She is unfucked. <laughs> I feel like she's eating them at a really fun angle as well. She's doing the <laughs> thing where she's kind of Greek eating them, you know, like yeah. in the painting. Yeah. Um, like she's like, styling um... it out on every turn. Oh. oh, and she burns it using a magnifying glass. That's yes, it. she like, burns the letter. Reads yeah, it, reads it using a magnifying glass and then burns it. I was like, that's fucking yeah, like, that's well, high I mean, quality. Me, grandma, like, and grandmother is presented as very religious, like mm. stone cold. If you're not if you're not praying, then you're not living, kind of religious. Um, and Valerie Carrying seems to like end. Valerie's in with the vibe. You know, she's clearly got her own thing going on. But she's you know, Grandma's cool. She's but she knows this letter mm -mm, cannot. No, no, no. This is contraband. Mm -hmm. At so there's going to be a sermon at the church for all of the young maidens, the virginal maidens. Oh, I love this scene and. All of the girls are in white, but Valerie shows up in an indigo dress matching uh, the the constable or R Richard, as we'll come to learn that Dick. his name is Dick. She didn't get the she didn't get the memo to wear white, no. like mm -mm. stand out like a sore thumb. I'd be fuming if that was me. I'd just leave. You know, yeah. you, <laughs> you're like fuck this. I am not fuck dressed this. appropriately didn't for this event. Okay, you can all go stand over there in your white dress. I'm leaving. Goodbye. I'd be out here. <laughs> no way. Fuming for. What must the rest of the congregation in this church been thinking of this sermon that this foul tooth oh monster God. delivers? It was like, uh, you are virginal maidens who are coming of are age. 
pomegranate yet to be split open. This one you are uh, an, bursting an alabaster, a, a boat shaped leaf. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> like, an uh, alabaster hello, my new grinder profile. Like, yeah, there you go. That's it. <laughs> I single am a leaf emoji. Leaf. Yes, yeah, single leaf. <laughs> leaf fall emoji. Absolutely next level. And all the girls are like, he's given us like. You know, I'd say it's all seven out of ten spoken word poem, and all the rest of the girls are just like, "Yeah, sure, man." Yeah. But uh, in in another horrible jump scare, Valerie is left alone, which mm. I thought was yeah. really effective. Everybody yeah. disappears. Yeah. yeah, and it's all just to her. Yep, this dude is like lips, tip, <laughs> lips, tits, and hips. Amen. And then suddenly, yeah. like, <laughs> it's just Valerie, <laughs> and he's are gone. Yeah, <laughs> like it's a uh, there's like candles everywhere, and again the. When I, when this film veers into the absurd, which it does, it catches you up immediately with shots like that. Because mm-hmm, yeah. you think you know what's happening and then suddenly it, 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 it gains a seriousness really quickly and then it recedes into silliness and then it snaps back to seriousness again. It's very, um, it comes and it goes. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, and I, I the, the the use of the ensemble, especially this is where I really noticed mm-hmm. the sort of the company of actors in this film, which is this is definitely like a we took five days, we went to a farm somewhere in Czechia, and we like just filmed everything. And it's the the these women's faces when they're praying are just stunning because everybody is so into it. Like these actors are killing. It. They're like so caught up and it's, you know, I mean, this is, you know, like this is, it it feels like liberation. It really does. Like Mm. it feels like everyone took whatever ridiculous bit of absurdist direction that they were given and took it with dead seriousness. So like you said, Sarah, like weird shit happens in this movie and sometimes it's kind of campy. And then other times it's profoundly interesting and moving because I think everybody on screen is taking it so goddamn seriously. Yeah, I think you're dead right. There's something about an ensemble of, of such a wide group of ages as well, because there are young girls and there are older people and everybody is kind of complicit in the magic of it, yeah. even in the absurd silliness. And I think that lends it a real, and because it's kind of folk horror, that's where folk horror comes from, right? Is everyone mm-hmm. being complicit at once in something? And I think you're you're absolutely you've absolutely nailed it like they're they know not one single person in that cast is winking at you no nobody serious is a heart attack but also not in an ari aster sort of like this has been no. choreographed with an inch of its life like oh. it, it's no, no, like no. you know kind of a bloodless sort of way this is mm. like lusty and fun and dark like this i, I don't know it's 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 a treat mm-hmm. yeah in the in the streets, the constable comes up from behind Valerie. Again, like scary, oh, scary this. man with his long cloak and oh, wrap and cloak. little Fuck white up. dog. <laughs> this fucking the third, the third what? accessory. Oh yeah. my god, he has like a pooch caboodle, a little white, scraggly motherfucker of a dog. But he, yeah, but he keeps it like in a in a baby Bjorn, like a marsupial over his heart. Yeah. So he's like, like fully gesticulating, and this dog is just chilling in its little baby carrier. Like, what? It's a perfect dog. It, it's the kind of the kind of dog that you would commonly refer to as a little crusty white dog. Yeah. Only it somehow looks like the most expensive dog you've yeah. ever seen. There is not an inch of this dog other than its piercing black eyes that is not completely freakishly snow white. It looks like actually it doesn't look like a puppet. And you know what, guys? At no point is this dog reduced to like a, an oven mitt. This is a dog. <laughs> This dog is earning it. Yeah. You know, he's perfect. It's real. it's real. Yeah. I'm just mad that I watched this movie after I went clothes shopping this week because I could have <laughs> used this for inspo. And I just, I failed. I just, I just got some chinos and a, and a new jacket. So no, you need, you need swooping black capes, bright white linens, mm-hmm. like hard contrast between colors and forms. I need a cloak like and this- a dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a tiny and a tiny dog and a fan, and a, fan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a white and purple fan. You know? Purple well, reminding us of the opening text. Oh. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, he takes, he wraps her up again. Valerie is not affected by this. Like, is mm-hmm. like, okay, well, this is happening now. Where are we going? And he takes her into 
as he calls it, my kingdom, which is this very witchy basement with cauldrons and cobwebs and shit. And he says, Oh, and a bearskin rug. And a bearskin oh, yes. rug. I love this shot because a lot of the scene is shot from directly overhead. So you see the full mm. sprawl of the bearskin rug, but also it gives you a hint as to we're in the underworld. And then he has her look through. This is one of the few moments where Valerie looks uh, perturbed or, or actually upset by what she sees. He's like, look through this peephole. And what she sees is grandma with the priest, Gracian. And she's basically like, I love you. I throw myself at you. Like tearing her dress open, being like, I throw myself at you. And he's like, nah. Nah, and she's like, I'll whip myself for you. And it's like, she's like whipping her back. And uh, yeah, he's he's not there for it. No, he has other agenda. He's yeah. just chilling on the chair, being a horrible, scaldy prick. Like, he's just like, yeah. you're whatever. Yep. And uh, it's it's highly, highly distressing. And poor little Valerie is not, not having a good time. Um, yeah. But also not having such a bad time that she actually like, her poise is doll-like continuously, and you're right. This is one of the only times that she's like, no, <laughs> to yeah, one of the yeah, terrible things yeah. that's happening to her. But it doesn't happen long because Orlick mm -hmm. literally pulls like a Wily E. Coyote and just kicks the ladder out from under the constable vampire <laughs> and runs like the fucking, like, meep, meep, and he's out. Yep. There's a sexy flute involved. I think he's playing a sexy flute during this next bit. Oh my god! Yes, yeah, in the, the chicken house. coop. Yeah, yep. in the cock house. Chilling sorry, so in the cock house. It's it's very it's very magic flute. Mm -hmm. In like I mean it's like literally like not yeah I mean he's literally playing a magic flute or something but it's also just animal imagery, folk imagery, folk horror imagery everywhere. They're and his like, role oh. is sort of this this imp wizard. Yeah. type of creature like he's he's, the, he's like the sorcerer's apprentice right mm, he's that's exactly what he is because he's not he has no agency and he has no power and he's not scary but he's something he's all and he's not quite fully in the trickster's role either i think yeah. sorcerer's apprentice is kind of that's that's nail on head yeah it, from the from this loft the cock house loft they're looking down and they see the constable and grandma. And here's where we learn their names are Elsa and Richard. Or Richard. Um, so we realize they once had a, a, a loving, a, a romantic relationship. And she is, this is really interesting because this gets into, we start getting into the magic of the situation because we're seeing this like purple faced man with hideous teeth. And she is saying what I would give to be young again, like mm. you. So what she sees is the yeah. the fair, the fair red haired man that we glimpsed earlier. Yeah. And he says, well, give me back this house. And she said, but that would be robbing Valerie. And he's like, that's my price. And she's like, all right, where do I sign? I just want to be young again. Yeah, he's like, what is fuck it? them you're... kids. I'll be <laughs> yeah. again. No like, problem. you're ready to do more evil. Like, oh, please, you're worried about Valerie. You've done way worse in your lifetime. And mm. she's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, Eaglet Orlick gives Valerie a pearl, and he says, "This pearl will save you." And then he runs off. Listen, do I need to take it with water? Should I eat? Take it after I eat? Do I in need the some morning, orange juice? The evening. Like, yeah, like, can I? I'm not supposed me. to have grapefruit. Like, is is there an? <laughs> is there a? Is there a instruction? No, just it's going to save my life. Mm -hmm. Up the butt, in the mouth. Sabaz, what? How? How does this work? <laughs> I'll just figure it out. It's intuitive. And don't if worry. you don't like it, you can just gently spit it back up. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> you just, I think you just mix it with cold water, and then just that's dissolves. It. Yeah, that's it. It's Don't make the same release. mistake I did with the uh, the emergency and just put it oh, no! in your mouth. <laughs> yep. I was so shocked at that moment in my life. <laughs> I didn't think you would actually do it, Jeffrey. I'm sorry. I... To this day, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I mean, you know, it works the same. It feels pretty good, actually. It's actually my I new kink. I told Jeffrey he should just put an entire emergency in his mouth because that's how it works. And then he actually did it. And then it gets into your just... bloodstream faster that way, through your gums. That's uh -huh. your, you did it with kindness. 
<laughs> watching him foam at the mouth for like a good five minutes and try to spit it's... it out. I'm sorry, Jeffrey. Man, no, that fun. no, it was fun. Uh, okay, so now we're out at this like outdoor picnic where the the virgins are the our our lesbian virgins, uh, yeah. our sturgeon virgins are out there spit roasting a pig for pig, the priest. Yeah. Poorly, or, like something that like this pig is clearly a prop. This is this is one moment where they're like, so "Am I supposed to eat off this?" Like you can see one woman kind of take a bit and go, mm, "It's pretty good," and her friend goes, "No, <laughs> it sure isn't." Everyone's like, mm -mm, "No, we're not touching that." There's candles lit on the table, and the sort of tablescape is very, uh, very elaborate and very anthropology. Uh, I did mm -hmm. get a kick out of the candles in the middle of the day. I was like, for what reason? For what uh, reason? Yeah. This, this, just because it's beautiful. And, and there's lots of daisies on the table, if I recall as well. Oh, yeah, there's lots yeah. of, uh, we, we, we continually encounter a lot of flowers just strewn, strewn about. This is one of the more, I mean, obviously we're not at the most sinister scene of this movie, but actually like it, 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 sinister lines of dialogue that happens because yeah. what mm. the dialogue in this movie often is either i'm evil let me talk about how evil i am or uh you know people speaking directly or people just kind of speaking ethereally to kind of fit the vibe and in this moment he's talking with elsa with grandma and he starts telling a story about in cannibal country I know. we saved a black woman she was very beautiful what happened to is she okay and he says we converted her Okay, so she's fine now, or everything's doing good. And he was like, "Well, we lost her at in a French port. I'll tell you more about what happened there. It was very bad. Like that's kind of the thing. And then we never hear the rest of that story. And knowing what we understand later about Gracia, and we're like, "Oh no, like that is that man is pure evil. That poor woman was not saved at all." He like leans over and says it right into her face and talks with her how her father was a bishop and her father was a good man and like he's really he he is immediately more sinister than fucking Nosferatu light over there do you mm -hmm. know like he pro he poses a much realer threat from the get go. So then he starts whispering into Valerie's ear about her father, the bishop, and how he was adored mm -hmm. by women, and it's. It's gross. It's real mm. gross. And also when yeah. he drinks his wine, he's at a kegger drinking this wine. And, and it's okay. Grandmother. I, I, yeah. I like the moment. I like the moment where they're like, um, wine, wine. And grandma is, of course, imbibing in wine. And and Valerie's like, wait, me? Wine? And grandma's like, oh, just this once. It'll be okay. And they do this thing where they have like these giant goblets. And then it cuts back to Valerie and hers is in a tiny little shot glass for no reason at all. Mm-mm. Like just shit just magically happens. Like shit just appears in people's hands. Yeah. I love it. People There's disappear. almost no no shot to shot continuity whatsoever. No. So you really oh. have to keep your eyes peeled and your ears yeah. open and your subtitles firmly on. Oh yeah. Yeah. But like the way that things like especially with the cloak, like you know, he'll like envelop somebody in a cloak and then move across the screen and he'll just like move that person off screen. It is the lowest of tech magic. And yet, when, you know, as long as you set up the parameters of the film are like, it's all going to be magic, it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not looking out for special effects or for tr camera trickery, like, we're going to stop camera and then, you know, superimpose this, that. Yeah. No, it's like theatrical stage magic. It's this very is another theatrical. One. I, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I love one it. thing I clocked while watching this film is every time there's like, uh, it, you know, diegetic mu music in the scene, right? Like people are playing instruments, the mm -hmm. flute in the cock house or whatever, the people in the forest the at actor, the end of the movie. Yeah, the actor um, band. The music always starts before people have their instruments up. Nobody is actually like trying to time up their music. And it's funny because like, I, I always kind of go to IMDb and just check trivia and things like that. But it, it, it was written under goofs that there's several moments in the movie where the the music doesn't time up to when people pick oh, up their instruments. Goof. I don't think it's a goof at all. I think it's very intentional because it is so theatrical. It is meant to inform you of its theatricality. So later that day, the priest come af after grandma leaves the house, the priest comes into Valerie's bedroom. Leaves. Leaves, leaves the house. Yeah. And um, 
starts commenting on her body and he wants to touch it and do things and he does the he does a weird dance. He has, he has, like a, like, he has a necklace made of bones. The teeth, yeah, that's the little, yeah. the little cannibal reference there. He like I kind know, of reefs right? open his Catholic uniform to reveal this sort of hard inverted commas, sav- uh, hard inverted commas around savagery. But it's it's a it's a non subtle, uh, yeah. because it happens so close to the prior conversation. It it kind of loops back in on that metaphor. It's gross, yeah. and it is gross. It is like quite genuinely a very uneasy, uh, uneasy few minutes. Yeah, of viewing that. The dance is kind of what sends it over the edge for me of like, you just, you topped out the grossness here. Like that's a layer of disgustingness. And so she swallows the pearl, which is how it's, I guess, the correct dosage. Oh, that's the, just one pearl, one one pearl once a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And she kind of goes into this catatonic state and he stops and backs away, realizing what's happened, that the, the pearl has saved her, it has protected her. Okay, Grandma is signing the cut. So she had to run out because she had to sign over the house to Richard. <laughs> That's why Grandma ran out. Uh, so she's got to go deal with realtors and all that kind of stuff. She's got to go get a cashier's check, uh, sign some papers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's talk about Hedvika's wedding. And she's oh, marrying... Opulence. <laughs> <laughs> opulence. <laughs> you know what? I when When I get married, all I want is for all the old women of the village to come and uh, dress me, braid my hair, put me in mm-hmm. my veil, and pray over me. That's all I want. Mm-hmm. Like, I want mm-hmm. the oldest nanas of the village to send me off. Uh huh. As though I were being transported down the river of the dead and with the same intensity. I also need the entire room the party is in to be painted white. Ceiling, floor, walls, whole table, white. Everything yeah. is white except... The flowers and red wine, which will be spilt everywhere elegantly, um, as though as though blood. <laughs> yeah, that's that shot is so beautiful. Mm. I actually paused that it's shot. Stunning. It's this long. It's like, it's it's a really long table with our bride and our groom at the far far end. Everything is white, but it's like a party has gone down. There's oh. like cards on. There's like playing cards and half-eaten food and candles. Yes, the cards. And yeah, just like a raucous party has gone down. But we don't see that. We just see the aftermath of this sad fifteen-year-old bride and fifty-five-year-old pot-bellied groom mm-hmm. just being real, real awkward up at the mm. very top of the screen. I oh my god, I want to elements- play that this like this this is this is gorgeous to me the set and the i will say the cinematography is absolutely fucking shocking and the set design is unbelievable it's one of those films that does make you think of that whole eleven every frame of painting kind of thing mm-hmm, like yeah. you can pause there are plenty of sequences that you can pause and just gawp at because they're laid out so beautifully and this is one of them it's stunning this this movie is a really interesting pairing with a movie we watched a while back for Patreon, which is Picnic at Hanging Rock, because oh. they're both doing something really, really interesting with pastoral romance, folk romance, yes. um, with the every, fa- every frame of painting. Both movies have that gauzy, like every, any still, pause it at any moment. You're like, I could hang that on a wall. And but but they're also both very horny movies yeah. um, in quite different ways. Mm. the i really love this shot of the wedding party is gone except for hedvika and the landowner groom the older groom and they're sitting side by side at this long table and they're the only two people there and she is crying and she turns to him and says well come it is time like got to got to get this over with yeah yeah but during their uh, during their consummation uh Richard and Elsa pop up and just Elsa just hanging out by the bed. Just boop, there we are. And Elsa bites Hedvika on the neck. And then the cloak comes up from Richard cloak. back down and oh. she's gone. And it's such an interesting vampire moment because usually the bite is kind of it's a mortal blow to the human. Yeah. Right? Like, usually there's that, or you're turning them into the vampire. 
Right. And it's this moment felt like a sort of a transference. There was a few minutes where I thought did also go into the body of the bride. There was also yeah. like a real profound eroticism to the approach that the two vampires had on the married couple, because we've seen orgies a couple of times in the film already. So I was like, here we go again. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, and the way that it was done so kind of too gently in a way that that's the frightening bit is that it's mm -hmm. done really softly yeah and instead of with this executioner's violence it's really sensual which is deeply freaky and a lovely approach in a kind of a more more compelling approach than just the fucking scary vampires rocked up to the bed on the night of the wedding of the bride like it's it's freakier than that i think and smarter um and that drop of the cape and realizing else is gone d did confuse me for a second. I was like, oh shit, where is she? Which I think is the exact effect that it was intended to have. Valerie goes running through the field. She finds Orlick tied up in a rushing river again. <laughs> and um, oh, she takes him back to her house. Now there's this kind of ongoing thing with these two, which is the, f it's a constant confusion as to, are they two young people that could or couldn't be in love or are they brother and sister because he is also the son of the bishop or are they brother and sister because they're both children of the constable Richard? Is the, is the bishop and the constable and Richard all the same person? Like yeah. some weird Cerberus of a yeah. power structure in a small town? Yeah. Uh, three heads of the devil kind of thing. And like poor old Orlick, he's always just trying to throw the lips on uh, Valerie. And every time it happens, I have an opening like, she has a child, do not smooch her. Like this is me talking to myself in my notebook, mm -hmm. reminding myself of what things happen. But then it's like, not only is she a child, but she's fully your sister. And she's always like, don't stop yourself. She's yeah. She's very... For a character who is moving through a dreamlike situation and behaving very unpredictably, she's not without agency. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. not without power. Yeah, she gets shit done in this film. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about that as well. Like, kind of the, the Alice in Wonderland, you know, shit just sort of happens to Alice. And Alice goes, well, my Victorian morals can't handle it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And versus Valerie, who's just sort of like, oh, you want to play that game? Oof. I got some magic yeah. as well. And she pops a pill. And she folds up into a dove and flies the fuck away. Or it wouldn't work you know, if she was something. pulling. If she was pulling the Disney, my stars, a pearl. <laughs> You'd like me to take this pearl? Well, I suppose if you say so, Orlick, I must trust you. Like, there's no pausing. She's like, cool, yeah, whatever. Let's go. <laughs> She's like, oh, a pearl, great, okay. No, I do I really, love this. I do yeah. love this setup of like. I think at this point. You know, so we've got these magic ear. Now we know these earrings are magic because they're connected to the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they belong to her mother, theoretically, who may or may not be a vampire. She looks pretty vampire-y to me in the, her painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Orlick does this really cool thing where he's like, oh, don't worry. Um, your grandmother or whoever might have taken the earrings, but I've stolen the pearl from out of the earring, which is like the clapper of the bell, of these mm -hmm. little bell earrings. Yeah, he calls it the clapper of the bell. Yeah. Doesn't he? So it's like, that's the magic bit, which is also yeah. like the most sexually suggestive. Mm -hmm. It is. But that's it where the is. magic is in the sort of that, that like little daintiness. And we, and we see these pearls come and go, you know, but this is where he, again, it's like this, the thing, like an outsider would be, would be like, oh, we're going to steal the earrings. The earrings are, but no, no, no. There's magic in the earrings that not the earring itself. And it only Orlick and Valerie seem to know how to use it. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's it makes no sense and it makes perfect sense at the same time. Yeah. It totally yeah. does. Yeah. Well, they get back to Valerie's house and they see Gracian hanging from the window. Valerie kind of oh my God. surprised for that a second. That was intense. That yeah. shot is really, this is what I mean. The really jump hung scares. Him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he's like trussed up, but it's like he, and, and it's the way it's what he says. Like, yeah, he's Valerie like freaks out. Mm -hmm. And and he says, Oh, don't worry, it's just a man hanging from a window. <laughs> yep. And it, it just it happens in front of you like that. And like it's very distressing. And then they're dragging him into the into the sort of liminal spider webby whole that, place that where many much of the yeah. action happens yeah. that underworld zone. Another thing that is noted a couple of times is that there is a chicken plague. There is a plague happening in the village. That's mentioned a few times. A foul, F-O-U-L. Oh, plague. yeah. 
Yeah. So the whole place is crawling with chickens and birds. There's a lot of birds, a lot of white chickens, a lot of livestock of that kind. There's a couple of the shots of the horse just standing around, which is lovely. Oh, yeah. There's always a horse in the background. It's always just a weird unroped or unmantled horse, which is... mm, That freaks me out. Uh, But yeah, there's also... The, the chickens are like mad poisoned yeah. so that's another thing that we learn at this point or, or well, is they're being or preyed on by stated. the polecat mm-hmm. you know it's prey it's prey for the weasel all cat man i love that yeah. every country in europe seems to have its own version of like a weird long cat the mm-hmm. irish one is called a pine martin um Ooh, yeah. and right isn't that a great name mm-hmm. um the they're all some some description of a hyper local ferret with degrees of violence spread into it and this pole cat man i'm not walking that on a lead to around yeah, neighborhood no. that's a no. bad fella like he's yeah. he's spooky not good so in the um down in the underworld eaglet sort of cracks open a cot are they drag Gracian down there, but then they all, he also cracks open a coffin and we see the body of grandma in there and we realize mm. she a vampire now. But she winks and smiles at Valerie yep. and then just goes right back to sleep. Yep. Like the most benign, but just like, hey, no, I'm sleepy. I'm eepy. <laughs> she flashes her these giant teeth briefly oh, know, as right? well in her eepiness. She's just like, has the go on? And she's probably wearing the same set of falsies that the uh, <laughs> constable bishop. <laughs> Nosferatu also wears like they're they just sprayed him with Purell and switched mouths yeah just off you go it's it's camaraderie right it's it's shoestring budget (laughs) off you go (laughs) okay so now we have the arrival of the distant cousin who is grandma but in a different wig and no white face makeup god damn everything this woman wears from here on out oh perfect vivian westwood who who yeah yeah it's like... it's vivian westwood it is like oh. um it, it is full on velvet underground it is mm. full on like black lick, gloves. lick like... my boots mm. like all of this very bitchy riding instructor oh yeah oh you yeah know? with like right. her hair pulled back in a like a sort of like almost um like She's like a very sexy George Washington. (laughs) (laughs) Mm, Head of state. Yes, given it loads. (laughs) You've given me another internet search. (laughs) (laughs) Go just write that one down. (laughs) Okay, so as Valerie goes to sleep, Elsa kidnaps her, brings her back down to the underworld, which is like a machine room part of the underworld. What? Oh, and what in- do you think this? Okay, no, I have a question for the panel. I have a question for the panel. What do you think this machine's actual purpose is in the real world when it's not a prop in a film? In the real world. Oh, like did it come from a mill? Is it a piece of clockwork? Is it? Yeah, like- I thought it was a clock. I thought that it was just like inside this big clock. I don't know why that was the vibe. Like in whatever weird. <laughs> Enid Blyton ask chapters of my imagination that assumes what the inside of Big Ben looks like. I'm like, oh, it's just like a, a beautiful dusty chamber with loads of cogs. Yeah, it's not what anything looks like. But that's where my head went was that elaborate goth clock. I I sort of presumed it was something farmy that's not specific because it looks shot in a barn. Yeah, and so I feel like they didn't energy. build anything yeah. for this. They just kind of put the camera to only focus on some of the cogs of the machine. And that's not chickens. showing that it's maybe thrashing wheat or whatever it's doing. You know what I mean? I I, I don't know my big farm equipment, but I just sort of I just love that. that it has like you know when like an old school alarm clock. You know the little key on the back that you would use to turn it. It has yeah. one of those the size of my computer. Yeah, <laughs> like the size of a desktop. I was like, that is the like it's. Maybe it's like a giant music box. It does. Yeah. It, does. it yeah. looks like a, big like a music whimsical box. music box. Yeah. yeah. Um, like that plays green sleeves that you would like mm-hmm. give to your grandma on her birthday or it something. It also like is fully where Elsa decides to go and have like a little romp with the mustache man. There's one, there's kind of a, like we mentioned earlier, there's like a fleet of, of men that kind of mince around topless with whips. Yes. And there's one in particular who's featured early in the film having a little smooch with the Virgin Brigade. Um, and he's here again having a, a, a bone dance with Elsa. And uh, she gives him the fucking vampire bite in the neck. Yeah. 
so maybe it's like you know her like chomping chamber you know what i mean like yeah it's a, it's a space oh, yeah. that doesn't appear to layer. have a lot of utility like there's it's very hard to describe in terms of navigating this film as a viewer things are just happening there is yeah. a little to no real continuity scene to scene we're just in a clock now yeah. why is elsa yeah. bringing this man to the clock don't know why is she bring valerie to the clock also don't know yeah mm -hmm. how was valerie how was valerie on top oh because she had a pearl so she's kind of in a state of stasis. Also, the priest, yeah. as we learn, somehow he wakes up later when she spits out that pearl. Yeah. yeah. But I love, I, I just love the, you know, this is sort of a medieval, I sort of saw it as a medieval European village kind of scene. So yeah. it's like above ground, everyone is having weddings, praying, going to confirmations, you know. Cute market. Yeah, yeah. Going to, you know, going to anthropology to pick up their flower crowns. <laughs> but below decks, it is S&M orgy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's mm -hmm. this weird duality of like the virgins up, upstairs are just hanging out. You know, they're just sort of chill. But downstairs, it is raucous. Yeah. Yeah. Not a bodice unripped. Yeah. Like, it's wild. Well, and some of the some of the disconnect, especially for the missionaries, when we meet Gracian and the missionaries, when early on there's a scene of them walking to church and they see two of the actors or young people fucking on a log. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And are really, so the when, when the underworld, when as above, so below, but don't tell me about the other. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So I as must the turn below, my eyes away upstairs, yeah. but downstairs, I'm yeah. the queen of the ball. Yeah. Also, Damn. Sarah, there's one of those nuns that stole your face. I think it's the like Thank there's you. one that they're also who, like, hot. Herself. They're also hot. <laughs> Thank like, you. you know, all these, like, oh. all these blonde, tall women. <laughs> That's what they were. These <laughs> women. Thank you. I did, I did notice that they all have a kind of a lovely, like they are a bunch of like just <laughs> vaguely blonde uh, pastoral looking broads and uh yeah those are my people those are my mm -hmm. people i would yeah. i would wash some clothes with those i'd make out with them in a lake i'm <laughs> i'm all, i'm down i will join them any like day. who's got the fish yeah oops where's it gone <laughs> oh, no. oops. Oh. <laughs> um something cool that happens in this scene that i don't want to miss is that guns just come out of the wall yeah, this is I how. Know. Oh, it's. I think it's Orlick. Orlick. Is it Orlick? Yeah, it's Orlick so, rescuing it's... her. Oh. Yeah, but it's like a it's like a speakeasy door. So yeah. Whoever like you can't all you see are just like two pistols. It's so surreal. It really like is. like Revolutionary War era musket yeah. type pistol things. Yeah. So he gives her earrings back to her, says, I love you. And she's like, you can't. We're brother and sister. And he's like, no, no, no. The polecat is my father. Your father's the bishop. It's all five. whatever. That's going to be continue to be confusing. Valerie goes to the farmer's market and steals a chicken. Yep. And she runs back down to the underworld where Elsa and Richard are doing some kinky shit. Uh-huh. On the and bear mat. Oh, on the bear, yeah. on the bear rug. It's like I love it. He's just bear writhing. Rug. He's just he's he's like, does. "I'm dying, I'm dying." And, and she's, she's like, like, "No, you're not your yeah. friend." <laughs> that sucks, doesn't it? Death sucks, doesn't it? And the second I saw that bear rug, I knew something was gonna go down on it. I was like, "Someone's getting blown down, or someone's gonna die in that rug, one or the mm -hmm. other." And it was a little both. Yeah, a little bit of both. This is interesting too, because so the so Richard says to Valerie, he's like, no, 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 I was the bishop. I'm, you know, or he says actually to Elsa, I'm the bishop. I am Valerie's father, and in her blood lies our salvation. If we could get her blood, we'll be good. But when it's just him and Valerie comes to him with the chicken, he does say, "I'm just a man again. I and I, I have to die. It's that time." But it's all a ruse. Valerie bites the chicken's neck sucks the blood, and then kisses it into Richard's mouth. Oof. But also, eh? Eh? Like, it, like she, when you say they bite, it's it's more like she, like, kisses the chicken. It's all very off-screen. Yeah, Gently yeah. smooching. Gently yeah. smooching. You yeah. Know? Like, there is an exploitation-y... This film is an exploitation-y kind of film, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. the actress who's playing Valerie is a teenager. She's 13. Yes. Like there is a kind of a mm, disquieting edge about that, yeah, but, but like, yeah. 
they kind of do a I'm not going to say they do a good job of anything in their end of this, <laughs> but they do kind of cut a lot of the they cut around her in like for example they don't depict a 13 year old biting the neck out of a chicken and then direct yeah, yeah. you know they they shoot it at at uh, at angles so that for some reason Valerie splitting the blood of a chicken into her father's mouth is less disquieting than the sequence the sequence with the priest do you know that yeah. sentence should be the first sentence of some sort of essay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you're right you're right and and you know what i i i got to say you know, before we went into this movie just the title alone, Valerie and her week of one. I was like, man, are we going to watch Deep Throat? Like, this is yeah. like, I set myself up to really feel some icky, like, to see some icky things. But this movie, like, I mean, it it is exploitative in some ways, but it feels like it has its heart in the right place. You know, so it's not like, full on like when especially when you're talking about the horror genre which is kind of an anything goes as long as it gets a rise out of you in whatever way that's good but this yeah. movie kind of doesn't go there it cuts the cuts and the editing in it is really compelling because it is yeah. again difficult to follow but it's it, it like I, I keep saying it's cut around her it's cut around her most it, of the time and it's her agency. I mean, that's yeah. the primary mm. difference. You know, if they're yeah. set, if 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 Alice in Wonderland had any sex in it, it would be pure male-driven porn, right? Yeah. And and yeah. you could actually read Alice in Wonderland if you even add the author of Lewis Carroll into it too. You know, you, there there is something really disturbing about Alice in Wonderland, the books, uh, because of the way in which just things happen to her, and she kind mm. of has to be tamed a little bit like all of her like snotty little victorian bullshit has to be sort of yeah. tamed by the world whereas valerie is introducing a new world to the world yeah. like valerie yeah. is, is bringing the things so all yeah. of the exploitation in this movie as a movie as a male director and a young woman and the sexuality and the nudity and whatever else is very icky as a whole but like the way the movie is conducted the way it is written and crafted it's easy to forget that on the surface it's icky because you're like, actually, this is going in a direction that is so much more interesting and respectful. And I think those mm. two things can be absolutely true. Well, she she gets Richard kind of does the ha ha, I'm back into a monster and bites Valerie and puts her. She's fake sleeping, pretending to be asleep and puts her into the crypt. Um, A crypt made or a, 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 like a, a coffin made of apples. That's it. That's oh my it. god, the apples. What could those oh, that symbolize? Was so cool. Yeah. Which I love. Did you clock this? Okay, so all Valerie eats throughout this movie are apples and honey. And, and did berries, you see yeah. what their bee what their beehive is? <laughs> it's this wooden sculpture <gasps> of yes. Adam and Eve in the garden and where their yes. genitals are, that's where the Bees. beehive is in Adam yeah. and Eve. Fuck me it's up. Brilliant. Can I yeah. can I it's order brilliant. this on Amazon? Is I'm gonna start. That's anthropology's finest. Oh, is what my that is. Yeah. God. But that's all she eats. Like she is pure child of nature. Yeah. But she is. I, I love again. She's she's faking sleeping, and um, we learn that Richard's plan is like we could get Orlick, get his heart into Valerie to make her immortal, but Elsa's like. No, what if we just kept us immortal <laughs> and took her heart and did all of this? Meanwhile, Valerie sits up and spits out the pearl. And at this moment, Gracian awakes in this underworld place. And what's so interesting is all of Valerie's grace toward the vampire people, all of her, you know, curiosity about them, even. Yeah. 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 And, um, Valerie is practicing a very Christian form of forgiveness that oh. it is. And and <laughs> she does for the priest, too. The priest tried to take something from her just as Richard has been trying to take things from her and Elsa. And he tries to take something from her. And then when he has a moment of being given that forgiveness, what does he do? He says, you tempted me to sin. You are a wicked girl and runs yeah. off. Yeah. Is the biggest indictment of the church yeah in the, in the scene here so she goes 
one, she gets a goodbye letter from Eaglet, who's like, you abandoned me because you kissed that monster. And I'm like, go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. you're not my boyfriend. And this letter was cool because she had to warm it up in the sun to read the oh, text. I love it. Yeah. That was kind of cool. That was, right that was fancy. Juice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, lemon juice. In the heat. Okay, let's talk about Hedvika because she's back. Oh, she's back oh. and she's down. She's, she's, you know, she's got tired of knitting mm -hmm. in her pure white room with her pure white knitting. I was like, girl, what you making over there? Mm -hmm. But you know what? Valerie's going to give you some kisses and cuddles and make you feel okay. Yeah. I think the world, the, the phrase she uses, a close girlfriend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you mm -hmm. think there are lesbian undertones to these scenes? What? Uh, I thought, mm, I mean, they were said they were close girlfriends, but like... I don't. Mm, I took their kissing and fucking so. <laughs> to be kind of lesbian, <laughs> but not I like think... we're gonna co-own. That's just my read <laughs> on it. You know, we're not gonna own a Subaru together, kind yeah. of. Yeah. No, I don't think they're moving in together. It's very um, it's it's you know what? It's a brief respite. I think. Yeah, I think <laughs> in they terms both of, needed it. In terms really, of the shit that like, we have to deal with in this film. Valerie's Good got a fucked her. up family. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You know, head because she's she's just like I just want anybody to touch me that isn't like meaty paws, Mister Meaty. Yeah, paws and Valerie's here. like I just want anybody to touch me that isn't like my cousin or brother. Like, please, <laughs> you know, we're alive <laughs> so for that matter. Give Valerie a fucking break. She, now I do love this. This is kind of a, a moment of like head because gives us some interesting insight to like vampire. She's like, I think I was bit mm. by a vampire girl, mm. and sure enough, after a night of sleeping with Valerie, and they do just sleep. Like and it's very obvious. Like they just kind of tumble around in bed and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Hedvika wakes up and she's human again. Yeah. So there is something in oh. this like child of child of God, child of nature. Valerie just being in her presence can revive you. Yeah. Back Healing to full, nature of a good health. of a close gal pal. You mm -hmm. know. I also like the text in this film is kind of redemptive and interesting. It's like an exchange of information rather than a kind of a punitive thing. There's loads of sex just happening vaguely in different cuts across this film. It's punctuated by sex of different kinds. And like, not explicit, but like just people smooching and touching and what have you. Yeah. yeah. But it's not, there's no punitive thing around it. The only time that somebody's punished for sex is Valerie spurning the priest. That is the only punishment yeah. around yeah. sex that happens. Otherwise, it's it's an inf exchange of information and it's a holistic act. Yeah. It's it's true folk horror, like it's yeah, it's rich. Like I mean, this might as well be the Wicker Man, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Like... So Gracian, speaking of which, is now preaching in the town square about the witch and the temptress that mm. that tried to hang him, that that tried to seduce him, that used magic, and then there she is in the crowd, and he's like, "Hand her over and burn her at the stake." Meanwhile, there's this other young girl that keeps showing up with what are those the snap flower dragons? Girl. Yeah, girl. the flower girl. Yeah. I kept thinking that was Orlick in disguise, but it's not. Ooh, okay, no, it's I kept, like girl. I was thinking that's how like you know when he sent her the note saying, yeah. "Hey, get the horses ready, we're gonna escape." So he like, you know, did that thing that he learned from. Yeah, he shape shifted, which is a trick he learned from his master, and mm -hmm. so he's laying low, kind of you know, like in deep cover keeping an eye on Valerie, but I don't know. That was the plot that I went with and then later. Yeah. But no, that's not really true. Yeah. So they, um, the shirtless men, the hot cops, uh, stripper team shows up. Thunder down and, under. <laughs> and they tie Valerie to the stake on top of a big pile of wood in the town square. You know, confess that you're a witch is uttered and she sticks her tongue out at the priest. Yeah. I love it. She cannot be bothered by any of this. Like, she is lit. Like, if you handed her a nail file, she would literally be uh -huh. filing her nails. She is, she is the, she's the painted nail emoji in the scene. Yeah. Mm. 100%. Yeah. Mm. Just like, oh, what? Am I burning? Am mm -hmm. I burning for your sins? Mm, this cute. is the, this is the profound gorgeousness of being a teenage girl is that once, you can, this is why I was like, on one hand, I was joking about it being so Tumblr Coquette Landed Ray, but it's like, no, that's what being a teenage girl is like. They can, the people who do the worst shit to you can tie you on a stake and put you up in front of the village to burn. No one will help you. Everyone thinks you're a, a danger, a bitch, all this other stuff. No one is coming to protect you. And your weapon in return 
is that you can be like, yeah, what the fuck ever? Because there's nothing more dismissive than a teenage girl who rolls her eyes at you. Oh, yeah. And I uh-huh. think that, that leaving her with that power in that instance is a brilliant choice. It's brilliant. Yeah. No, I can't remember. How does she get, like, it just sort of cuts away. She, right? Well, she says uh, she swallows the pearl again. Oh, and then right. and then the next time we see the pyre, everything is ash. But sitting and on the and branch a white is dove. a white yes. white dove, and it kind of turns to. And then later, she's like, "There's a dove flies away, and she's just transported back home." Yeah, magic. Mm-hmm. So we're back in the dungeon. She, you know, she gets back to the get back into the dungeon. Now the musicians are all down there. All Ooh. the. The Thunder Down Under is all down this there is like as well. Studio 54. Yes. Magic, Magic Mike and the boys are all oh. down there. You know? And you get the impression like the entire village is here. Yeah. That has, has RSVPDS to this orgy. Yeah. Looks um, like great fun. It yeah, really does. Like Everyone's having a nice time. Yeah. So there is a moment though where things go sour between kind of the central hunky dude who we see doing most of the fucking throughout the movie and he and Richard get into it it's like, and it's have you ever been beaten before and he, mm. or the count the count is like Psh, with a wave of his fan like sends him flying away you go but then valerie takes the pearl and before the dude gets the dude gets back up with a knife coming at richard valerie drops the little pearl into richard's wine and he takes a slug of wine before going to fight this guy and suddenly he just melts just his cloak left and we're like oh he's vanished but then no wait they pull away the cloak it's the pole cat it's a a whole pole cat it's a whole long boy i I love a good shapeshifter Mm -hmm. like animus they save it for this moment as well they don't actually show they refer to a pole cat but finally showing it to you in this sort of last movement is just a great great shout yeah yeah and especially like um, i mean and this is you know for a little flag for animal cruelty but like you see this polecat eat a chicken yeah Mm -hmm. and then i'm pretty sure they shoot that both of those animals on yeah they nail it to this straight nail it to a wall what's like what's what's interesting about the polecat as well is it's i was was joking about ferrets but like it has a snake-ish quality it has that long body you know and that's that imagery is really really interesting like that it's sort of this long slithery thing phallic one might say yeah yeah garden of eden kind of vibes yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. so then there's this epilogue which is just kind of a series of vignettes that is that begins with valerie finding orlick in the woods kissing him awake trying to kiss him awake like sleeping beauty snow white sort of shit then we see her you know just strip fully baby naked and crawl into bed and then now we're back to a repeat of that very first scene with grandma. Oh yeah, I love this. Back grandma's old again. And grandma's mm-hmm. old again. And she asks, uh, where were you? And she says, I was at church, of course. And Valerie says, uh, have the missionaries gone home now? And she says, what missionaries? <gasps> Look, Valerie, outside. The the actors are here. And she looks outside and there's Eaglet on a horse. And they exchange. She's like, come on. Yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, but again, Valerie's like, no, I kind of like it here. Like, I'm entitled to this house. Yeah, this is my house. I'm yeah. not leaving. I'm not running away with you anywhere. I yeah, have he's... a fucked up grandma. I have a fucked up family. Who doesn't? I've got a, I've got, I got a fuck forest right next to me that I'm gonna go hang out in. Because he's like, don't go out into the theater. Don't go out into the forest. Come with me. I've got a horse. We can drive away to the blue lake. She's like, no, fuck no. <laughs> so grandma tells her some stories about you were the you and another boy were children of your mom and the gamekeeper blah 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 but suddenly she just like fuck all this i'm going out to the to the fuck forest right but before that happens the carriage shows up with young richard the 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 ginger and young Elsa, or theoretically her, this is theoretically her mom and dad. This, yeah, but they're also looking really vampire-y. very pale, but very but beautiful. Like their teeth are not yes. vampire teeth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
she puts the earrings on the mom and then they kiss in a way that I don't really see yeah. parents and children kissing very often. Very um, a whole like jaw open like a snake. Yeah, like, open full... mouth kiss. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Grandma appears in all black and tries to choke mom. Then Eaglet and Valerie are riding into the woods where the virgins, the sturgeon virgins, are singing and dancing and eating grapes and making out. Yeah, it's full, it's full folk horror vignette is a lamb, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're like, just up with a lamb. Like, yeah. anything resembling a plot at this point has fully dissolved. Yeah. Like, anything even vaguely, like, yeah. this, any thread that we've been holding together is no longer a thread. No. Um, the constable is there, like in his full cloak and bad teeth, and young Elsa are there, and they're kissing, and they're like luring, come, Valerie, come to us. There's the mm -hmm. there's uh the redheaded dad sort of character, and Hedvika are making out and beckoning Valerie over. The yeah. sturgeon virgins are eating grapes and come kissing. Come to the orgy, girl. Come to the doing? orgy. It's a Friday well, night. Well, such a good time. This is the end of no, I do love that Valerie has taken her earring back from the the polecat, and then mm -hmm. she takes her earring like. Oh yeah, I think they briefly show us the earrings like on the polecat, which is like I know. The wall. I thought that was a look. Question <laughs> yeah. mark. And Listen, at... sometimes you got to dress up your pets. And mm -hmm. in the corner mm -hmm. of the woods is a cage, and hunkered down in that cage is Gracia. Yes. And he just and get she out. literally just goes, oh, and she like does the like tisk tisk tisk. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. You've been put in the naughties. We're gonna keep you in a cage out in the woods. You can't go to the orgy. Meh. And she crawls into a bed that is in the middle of this wooded area with people singing and dancing around her. And then suddenly she's alone. It's just her in a bed mm. in the forest. Fade to white. The it. Yeah, Connect. yeah, in cursive purple font on a white screen. Yes. Uh, shall we rate this film? Sure. How approachable is this if you're horror film averse on a scale of one to ten, one being least approachable, ten being the most approachable for the horror averse? I'd give Valerie in her Week of Wonders like eight out of ten. I, it's symbol eight out of ten symbolic bloody daisies, right? Like the question when I do this is how approachable is it as a horror film? You know, like there's mm -hmm. a lot about this movie that I think you should pause before you watch this film. Yeah. Because as you said, Griff, it's very exploitative. Like it, it is centering a very strongly sexual narrative around a 13 year old girl. So like this isn't a thing to watch with your kids. There's also a whole priest tries to come at this girl sexually. And uh, that's a real trigger warning here for everyone. And it. So there's there's a lot to be aware of as a film, as a complex piece of art that is really tough. But as a film, as a horror film, like it's subverting horror tropes. Like it's not gory. There's no real jump scares. A little bit of disturbing, creepy faces and things like that. Um, but like this is this is stuff like a creepy fucking dude coming after a young girl is not exclusive to horror filmmaking, right? So as a mm. horror film, I think it's very approachable, but know what we said about the exploitative nature of this movie. Uh, Cecil, so what about you as a, as a horror film? Yeah, for that reason, it, it it is a gorgeous film, but as a horror film, I think maybe knock it down to like a seven. Yeah. Seven bloody daisies. Yeah. Because it's it, it has vampires. It has uh orgies of the undead. It has all the things on the box that if you're reading a description of it, you'd be like, oh, but this is not, you know, a West Craven joint. Yeah. You know. Sarah, what about you? Would you like to rate this for wig usage for uh mm, I would give it one enormously <laughs> terrible wig out of ten, because there is one enormously terrible wig. Uh you'll know it when you see it. Um, I think, yeah, one wig out of ten, but it's a big one. Um, and otherwise, I think I would give it mm, five spilled glasses of red wine out of five. Mm -hmm. Like, I really like this film. Mm -hmm. I don't think I think with the kind of film that it that it is, and the kind of films that I've come on to talk to you guys about, it's actually funnily enough. I was thinking of the sequence of ones we've had a conversation about being the craft and. Um, Belladonna of Sadness. Um, there is an incredible examination of feminine horror in this. 
that is like rippled with exploitation uh but it's such a visually beautiful movie Mm -hmm. that i would drink from those cups of blood red wine anytime anytime well sarah we have to we have to turn you loose you have to go Mm, so we're gonna do this early and just say thank you so much for joining us on this episode i'm sorry you won't be here to help us pick the next movie but we'll have you back on again soon sarah where can people find you and your work in this world oh you can find me at sarah griffsky on blue sky because the other place is gone. You can find me on Instagram at Sarah Grifsky and on the Clock app also at Sarah Grifsky. Other Roots for Smoke is my most recent novel. And if you like teenage girls having a terrible time, well, have I got the haunted house story for you. I'll have more news about my future fiction projects very cool. soon. Thank you so much for having me again, boys. It's always a joy. It is. Absolutely. Thanks, Sarah. Anytime. Bye. Okay, let's figure out what movie we're going to watch next, Cecil. You have a scare die. I have a style die. We'll roll those up, see what horror film matches these two things. So if you roll a one on your scare die, it's a wild card. Whatever scare we want. Two, haunted house. Three, dolls or clowns. Four, a sadist. If you roll a five, animals. If you roll a six, it's a bad mom. That's a one. We got that wild card we've always Ooh, wanted. Yeah. Okay, style. If I roll a one, our style is Latin American, a film from Latin America. Two, a splatter film. Three, a movie from the 1970s. Four, something from the last five years. Five, something bloodless, psychological horror sort of thing. And six, just what the fuck? What the fuck did I just watch type of movie? Here we go. I got a four, something from the last five years. Okay, respectable, respectable. Respectable, and wild card, whatever we want from the last five years. Um, Do you want to kick it off or shall I? Go for it. Okay, so the first one I put on here was His House, which mm-hmm. is uh, a, um, a movie that has often come up, and uh, I'm really curious to see this. Um, a refugee couple makes a herring escape from South Sudan, where they struggle to adjust to their new life in an English town, which, uh-oh, I think their house is haunted. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, to me, seems like a really good elevated horror that actually is scary. Yes. It's not like, I'm going to hit you over the head with a metaphor. You know, the horror is war or, you know, being a refugee. But it's part of it but not the whole story. Um, Cause I do like some scare, actual mm-hmm. scare in my horror films, not just arty farty. What, <laughs> whatever we just watched. Um, the other film, uh, the next film I put on there was evil dead rise. Of I've course. seen this one and I had a blast with this film. It sort of takes the evil dead Necronomicon mythology and takes it out of the woods and puts it into a sort of Hollywood tower of terror apartment complex Mm. but like some re it's really smart really scary i think it did a great job and worth a watch the other one is also a reboot the third one is also reboot the hellraiser reboot um you want to learn a little bit more about what this box does here we go i put on here x I've not seen this. You've not seen this. I no, have seen I... X, but I have not seen Pearl. Uh, our buddy Joseph Fink uh, has seen both. He suggested if you've not seen both, it actually doesn't spoil one thing or the other. It's kind of more, it makes almost more sense to watch Pearl first. Oh, interesting. Um, so it has like a... Pearl takes yeah. place before X. Um, another one I put on here I have not seen, but I was looking for something super scary is Invisible Man. Yeah. Uh which looks super scary. I've heard it is very scary. It Have is you very you've seen this? Very tense. Uh, it is very tense. Like unrelentingly tense. Oh, okay. Um, and then another one I really wanted to see, which is like action horror, which is Prey, part of the Have Predator series. This? I have not seen this yet. Oh. I was. It's kind of like you and X. I really want to yep. see it and I'm saving myself for the show. Oh. For, and for Jesus. And for Jesus. Uh-huh. Um. So these are okay, all really good. six. Yeah, these these are our six. I will say I have seen his house. I think it's a little bit more artsy fartsy. Okay, I love it. I loved this movie. I think it's a really really good movie. But 
Um, it is scary, but I think it's a it leans more artsy fartsy than terror terror. Okay, so that's okay. one thing to note about cool. that. I'm cool with that. Um, I'm also I've become a horror regular where I feel less bothered by things You're than like, I eh, did at the I'm outset not, of just... the show. So, uh, maybe it is horribly frightening. Uh, uh, so yeah, so those are all good. Is there anything else like? We have a few others that made the other possible combos, things like Lamb or Nope or... Well, uh, uh, Talk to Me is oh, another yeah. one that I'm like, I can't I can't decide if I want to like replace Talk to Me, pull out something and put Talk to Me in there because I've not seen that one. I've seen the preview and it looks hella scary. I loved it. That as well, I did. And it is hella scary and it's really good. Um, let's... Uh... And it's a good solid A24 choice, too. Uh, I'm... Those are, we all have really good ones. I would probably, have you seen the new Hellraiser? I have seen the new Hell, mm -hmm. Hellraiser. And I've seen it a couple times. So mm -hmm. I could easily pull out the new Hellraiser and put it in Talk to Me. That would be my choice of any of these to replace. Okay. If you wanted like, to, I had a good, I like, I had a good time with Hellraiser. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of fun, but I, I don't know. But yeah, I could go either way. If you wanted yeah. to, that would be the one I would do. But also, you don't have to do that either. It's already done, Jeffrey. Oh, you did it. Um, should we roll one through six and just yeah, pick one at cool. random? Yeah. Uh, you want to roll this one? So we'll do sure, His yeah. House one, Evil Dead Rise, Talk to Me three, X four, Invisible Man five, Prey six. That's a five. Let's let's get tense as shit and watch some Invisible Man. Ooh, here we go. Um, how exciting! I'm excited to see this movie, and uh, it'll be nice to come off of Valerie's uh, Valerie and her week of yes. wonders and get back into like super scary, the, the shit. most dreamy to the most brutally real. <laughs> yes, real, real. All right, well, that was fun and that was easy. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Cecil, for talking with me. And um, if you. If you all out there have thoughts on Valerie and her week of wonders or ideas for other movies that would have been good, like what is your wild card for the last five years of horror? Let us know on Instagram at Random Horror 9 or over on Patreon where we have public discussion threads for each episode and you do not have to be a paying Patreon member to participate in those. So watch Invisible Man from I think that's 2020 or 21. Uh, watch that with us this week and come on back next Tuesday for a new episode. Have a restful night with no horny grandmas visible through a peephole or nothing. Boo. Boo.